Well, hello and welcome again to our reading of the Greek New Testament. We're reading the Gospel of Luke, and we're up to chapter 5, the calling of the first disciples, and this particular section is also in Matthew and Mark. Again, it's our dear in to ton oklon epikestai auto, kai akuen ton logon to theu, kai autos ein hestos paratein limnein agenesoret. And it came to pass that, we get into plus infinitive again and the subject in the accusative in the middle, it came to pass that while um, the crowd were literally, um, epikamai is to, to, to lay against, so hence to press upon here. So it happened that when the crowd was pressing upon him uh, and that the crowd was hearing the word of God. So these are both um, after the uh, ento plus infinitive. And he himself was Hestos, was standing. Again, we get this periphrastic um, past tense here, the, using the participle from histami and the verb to be. He himself was standing beside the lake, the limnain of Gennesaret. Kaeden dua duo ploia hesto to paratain limnain, and he saw two boats standing, as a participle again, it's a neuter plural here, standing beside the lake. Hoi de halies ap auton ap abantos, abantes eplunon tardictua. And the fishermen, um, having disembarked from them, uh, they were cleaning, from pluno is the verb here, their uh, nets. Interestingly, Mark has, of course, a similar story, except he uses a quite a different word here. He uses a very vague word, meaning preparing or getting them ready or doing something with them. Uh, Mark, uh, Luke is much more specific. He uses, he says, they were washing the nets. Embas de ace hen turned ployo, and having got onto one of the boats, the one that belonged to Simon, this is genitive here of course, the one that was of Simon, erotes in auton apotesges ep anagagain oligon, kathisas dek to ployon, a ployu, edidas gentus oclus. So he asked him, this Jesus asked Simon, uh, ep anagagain. Now this is a, it's to put out to sea. It's a technical word. It's not, you get uh, anago. Here we're getting ep anago to put out to sea. It occurs in second book of Maccabees as well. Uh, so oligon is an adverb here, a little bit. Neuter adjectives either singular or plural, often used as adverbs. Kathisas dek to ploio edis, and so having sat down, he began to teach the crowds from the boat. Hoste e pausato lalone, when he had, but when he had ceased speaking, apen proston simona, he said to Simon, or Shimon, Hebrew name, of course, this is Peter. Uh, Ep an agage es tobathos. So put out into the deep. Kai kalasete. Now this is the imperative from kalao. It means to slacken, to make loose. Here it's to release or put down, let down the dictua, your nets. Es agran, idiomatic, for a catch. So he told him to put out their nets for a catch. Kai apokrithes Shimon a pen, and Simon uh, said, uh, having answered, he said, epistata. Now this is the vocative. It's just notice the ending here. It's a vocative from epistates, first declension, masculine noun. Uh, normally, in other right other gospels, at this stage they use the term rabbi. Uh, Luke doesn't. He uses this particular term for master, one who stands over you. So for master, 
uh, which is p possibly because a Gentile audience might not have understood if he'd used the word rabbi. It's one possibility why he uses this. Uh, so, Rabbi Di Holes Nuktos, copy Asantes Uden Elabomin. Uh, having laboured, you see this, the verb is copy as do. Uh, kopos is a labour or work. So, having laboured through the whole night, we took Uden nothing. De epi, so epi de to remati su kalaso tardictua. But, and it's quite a Important, but here, um, at your word, Kalaso, I will let down the nets. This is from Kalao, it's an alpha contract verb, but it doesn't lengthen. This is the future here, it's one of those verbs like Teleo, for example, it's an epsilon contract, you get these. Uh, and Kaleo, this is Kalao, and it doesn't lengthen in the future here. Now, kai tuto poiesantes son eklesan plethos ikthuon polu. And um, uh, having done this, son eklesan, uh, they, well, they captured, literally, kleo is to shut in, so they enclosed in their nets uh, plethos, polu plethos, a great multitude ikthuon of fish. De eresito de tardictua our tone. Now the verb here is de eraso, uh, to tear. It's cognate with regnumi, to break or to rip. We get our word rag and so on from that. But um, So this is de, de eraso. And here we've got the, uh, this must be an imperfect passive. And the subject is tardictua. And their nets were tearing. It's an imperfect. So new to plural, singular verb, which Luke tends to do. Other writers are not quite so um, strict with this. Kai kat enu san tois metokois in to hetero ployo to elthontas sulabes thy tois. And they, well, they nodded to, they made a sign. It's nuo uh, is that verb to nod, so they catanuo, so they yelled out to perhaps or made signs to the met okois. This is a classical word. It com comes from connected with met echo to share, and hence uh, fellow workers or partners in the other boat. And we get two plus the infinitive. And we get the verb here, the infinitive is from sul um, lambanamai, which here means to help or assist. It's the middle use here. In classical Greek, it would be active form would be more common. Uh, so they made, uh, they made signs to their uh, fellows, their fellow part, their partners in the other boat, so, so that having come, uh, to assist them. Sulambana has a huge range of meanings. It can mean to arrest, to assist, to help, to, to or just to take along with. Kai uh, elthen, and they came, kai eplesen amphotorata ploya, and they filled eplesen from uh, pimplaimi, if you're looking this one up, it's pimplaimi, and the root is play. The pi in pimplaimi is a reduplicated present. So you get play. So they filled um, uh, the both the boats, hosty plus infinitive. So as boothisdo is a late word. It's only here in the New Testament. It means to sink. It does occur in Polybius and in to Maccabees, but it's a late word. Uh, so they filled both the boats so that they, out of the boats, were sinking. Idon de Simon Petros, now he's named as Simon Peter, previously in this chapter just Simon, or Shimon. So Simon Peter having seen, pros epesen tois gonas in Jesu legon. He fell at the feet of Jesus, saying, Excel the ep amu hoti aner hamatolos 
Amy Courier. Depart from me, for I am a man, a sinner, Courier, O Lord. Bambos gar peri escon auton kai pantas tu sonato epite agra. For um, amazement, we had that word before, wonder or amazement, it was back in chapter 4, verse 36. So amazement, uh, peri esken from peri echo, uh, is to seize. It's to hold you all around and hence to seize you. So amazement seized, seized him, it's the aorist from echo, and all those with him uh, at, so amazement at, for the epi, the catch of the fish, and then its relative pronoun which, but it gets attracted into the genitive, so um, which, sun elabon, now here's the active form of that solembano verb we had just a minute ago, but here it's just um, uh, of which they took. It's just the old simple meaning of Sulambana. So at the at the catch of fish which they took. Homoyos to Kai Yakobon, Kai Yuanen Huyus Zebadayu, Hoi An Koinonoi to Shimona. Uh Homoyos um at uh, Oh well and likewise here. So likewise also, um, uh, James and John, the sons of Zebedee. So this is back based on this fear. So amazement took hold of him. And likewise also understand amazement took hold of James and John, Jacobos and Ioanne, Ioannes, the sons of Zebediah, who were koinonoi, who were... Uh, well, koinonoi, friends or sharers, literally, uh, with Simon. These must be the ones that were also working in the neighbouring boats. Kai apen pros ton shimona ho Jesus, and Jesus said to Simon, Me fobu, do not fear. Apo tot noon, this is idiomatic but quite common, from now on, essay, you will be, now we get a, we get a future um, periphrastic construction here. We've got the future of the verb to be plus the participle, just like we do in English. And the participle here is zogreo, if you're looking this one up. And the roots of it are zo and agra. So you will be um, taking alive Anthropus men. Now it's interesting, in Mark, he's, Jesus says, you will be fishermen of men. Luke changes that slightly and just said from now on you will be capturing men or catching it literally is to catch alive as you would with a fish so that uh, the agra root and the tsoa root kai cat agagontes top uh top uh ployer now we had that other form um other verb before of putting out uh, the ep ag again, now we just get cat again. This is the opposite of this. This is putting the ships back. So um, putting them back to shore on the land. So returning the boats to land, Aventis Panta, having left everything, they followed him. Takes a dative. Kai agenito ento ainai auton en mia ton polion kai idu anea pleres lepras. And it came to pass that uh, this ento plus the infinitive and the subjects in the auton, it came to pass that when he was in one of the cities, it's mia feminine because polis is city, is a feminine. So in one of the cities, and behold a man full of there was a man full of leprosy. Idon de Hoyesun, Jesus having seen, uh, or rather I should say, have, him having seen Jesus, I should say, Peson epi prosopon uh, ed de theautu legon, having fallen on his face. Now ed de athein, be careful of the two verbs, there's deo to bind and deomai to ask. 
or to beg almost. And it's middle, but it goes into the passive in the aorist. So he asked him, saying, Lord, if you wish, you are able to cleanse me. This is exactly the same expression in Mark's Gospel. Caetanus tan cara hepsita autu legon, thelo catharistati. Exactly the same uh, is in Mark as well. Having stretched out his hand, he touched him from haptomai, takes a genitive, saying, Thelo, I am willing, be cleansed. Caiuthios he lepra apaeothen apautu, and immediately the leprosy departed from him. Now, of course, Mark's very fond of euthus and euthios, doesn't occur quite so often in Luke, but he uses it here, he's getting it from Mark, but he keeps it here because it um, makes sense to do so. Kai autos parangelen auto made any a pain. And he, uh, parangelo is to order or instruct, and it takes a dative, so he gave orders to him to speak to made any to no one. Al uh, apelthon deixon si auton to hero kai prosenenke peri tu catharismu su cathos prosetaxen mo uses es maturion autois. And this is exactly word for word of what you get in Mark. But having gone, show yourself to the priest. And this uh, this is from an imperative, aorist imperative from prospero, to bring towards, hence offer. So make an offering regarding your cleansing, just as Moses instructed, from prostasso is the verb, as a witness to them. Not quite clear who the them are, as in Mark, um, but it's, it is word for word from Mark's gospel. Them must be referring to the crowds or possibly to the priests, but only one priest is mentioned earlier. De er keto, de malon hologos periatu, kai sun er konto okloi poloi akuain, kai therapuestai apoton asthenaion auton. Autos de ein hypokoron en tais eremois kai pros eucominos. And, uh, but the crowd, uh, now, de ericato here, um, they went about even more, or perhaps they are uh, regarding him. Sorry, the word, I should not the crowd, sorry, the not oklos, but logos. The word, uh, w well, it w was it was going about even more regarding him. So the story about him was was passing around even more and uh, much crowd uh, were gathering together to hear Kai Therapeutic passive in, uh, infinitive and to be healed from the asthenaion from the asthenaia from their well, literally their weaknesses but it's sickness the asthenaes means weak it means you've got no asthenos alpha privative plus the senos but no strength and hence it came to me the word for sick uh, some so from from their illnesses this is the uh, noun asthenia i think from their illnesses and he himself was hooper Karain. well it means to retreat it means to make space so he himself was was retreating again we get the periphrastic construction of the verb here for the instead of using an imperfect uh, in the desolate places and prosucominos and praying and that's the first part of chapter five